Hey folks, we'll get started in a couple of minutes here. Just give people a chance to connect. That's a really nice background. Uh, it's not even the same background as he had in the last meeting I was in with him. <laughs> yes. I was joking, I was like, yeah, everybody's doing their virtual backgrounds, but what if we didn't have virtual backgrounds? Like, well, I, I don't want, this is my virtual, this is my non-virtual virtual background. It's a little less boring, more interesting than my uh, bedroom background. All right, let's see here. I put the notes there. So on the agenda last week, we had a couple of things around the target scenarios for the prototype and um, this reverse lookup um, proposal that could uh, that I wanted a, a chance to review. If there's any other agenda items, well, we um, we were having a discussion about the TAF document. I I gave Marina some sizing figures for to help estimate. Oh, okay. That kind of model from that proposal. I don't know. Um, yeah, um, I also had a conversation with Samuel Karp offline and went through a bunch of things. I don't think he's had a chance to go back through, but I think we resolved um, many of the issues in the document that he raised, which I think were points of confusion. And also he, um, Help me to understand one of the things that um, one thing that I had I think been assuming that that the registry was doing differently that was actually extremely helpful, which I'd like to talk about in this meeting because it's a big security issue if if uh, we retain the same behavior. I think. Okay, so what what is your topic that we want to add to the agenda? Can you just add it in there, and we can. These meetings have gotten a little bit of just um, kind of going off and then we run out of time. So I just wanted to put some structure back to them because we originally had the hour slot so that we could have these open-ended conversations. We were supposed to do these breakouts. We haven't really been, everybody's been super busy. The world's been crazy. So we haven't really been as good about doing the breakouts. So these wound yeah, up. Yeah, I, I am going to need maybe five minutes to discuss this depending on how long the conversation goes after. But I'd like to just raise the point so that um, we're all talking the same language and that hopefully the, you know, people that maybe didn't understand it worked that way, which would have been me and I think at least Marina last week, um, maybe we're the only ones, but maybe there are others um, now would understand that, although Marina and I both, I think, understand it now and that others that um, we can hopefully convey why this is a big problem, although I don't think it's that hard to see but we'll see. Okay. So did you want to go, did, do you want to propose something that we talk about for like a time boxed amount or what do you want to do? What are you proposing here? Yeah, um, I'd like to talk about that. Um, so I am fine with however that works on the agenda. I would like to have more. Um, I don't think Marina's put her numbers into the document yet. We're still, she's run a bunch of um, sort of like simulations and things and her and I are still iterating on that. Um, we'd hope to have it in, but I would much rather give you things a week late than give them now and have them be wrong uh, okay. and then have to fix them. So we're, we want to be sure they're right before we present them. And right now we're not sure they're right. Oh. Do you want to just do yeah. this next week? Do you want to, you know, get get time to do that and do it next week? Yeah, we'll we'll leave that. Um, we'll leave the reporting about the what the numbers actually mean and how some of this, uh, um, like what what the overheads would be for the different design options and things like that uh, later. Um, I think next week would be a good time to put that on the agenda. Okay. Um, I think also it's. The one of the conversations was 
not only is the performance a concern, which if you guys are doing some stuff to investigate, that's great. I think it's also a question of is not that it's not a important problem. Is it an important problem related to private registries or public registries? Like where is the problem really scoped? I think that would actually help with some context as well. Yeah, that's actually, I had a nice conversation um, once again with Sam about that. And I think I got him to come around a little bit. So even in a private registry, I assume you're not going to be using like TFTP to just download images because, hey, you know, it's like a private registry and we kind of like block the network and we don't need any security or signing or verification. We'll just like dump the data on the network. You, you wouldn't do that. You'd use HTTPS because it's effectively free and sort of, you know, who cares if you've got a, you know, small overhead or whatever else. So the thing is, is that um, what, what we think we're going to end up here with here is going to be something that's going to have small enough overhead that this will just be the way people use it. And if not, then we'll know. And they'll, there will be able, you know, people will be able to make a decision to say in this environment, you might want to not use TFTP. And in this environment, you might want to use TFTP to use that analogy. But I, I think um, a priori trying to say, oh, this thing, we, we shouldn't, you know, it's messy. We shouldn't have to use it here. I, I think we should wait and see. It's not, okay. Right, let's, let's put it on the agenda and let's have the right conversation about it. Cause I feel like we're just kind of pulling on threads without really knowing what we're talking about. So um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was this conversation that, and I'm, I was hoping Sam was going to be here. Let me just see. Um, He's not going to be here. Okay. He, 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 um, won't, he won't make this meet. He'll make it next week. So one of the things day. that, sorry. No, I was just going to say, um, and so like comments he put in the doc and things, a lot of those are misunderstandings that I think have been resolved, but um, that he and I talked about individually, but uh, we, you know, whatever you'd like to talk about is, is fine. Go ahead. Okay. So um, one of the things, let me share my screen. So it's the link that's in there. Let me, I'll put it in the session as well, in the chat session. I'm trying not to use the chat session as notes because they're not, nobody's figured out how to find them afterwards. So we'll keep in the notes in the Slack conversation, in the HackMD rather. Uh, so let me share my screen here. We'll see how screen sharing is working for folks. Uh, but the link to it is in the doc, uh, sorry, in the uh, Zoom chat. So what I've got here, where's the window? Oh, here, here's the window, that's weird. Um, one of the things we've been talking about is how do we find uh, the content. And part of it is, you know, driven by some of the stuff that uh, Kapos is, uh, I'm sorry, Justin, I'm gonna call you Jack Kapos as opposed to Cormac just to separate. Uh, I hope that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Um, is the ability to find the most recent uh, content. And I know there's a larger scenario that you guys are focused on, but uh, the reference to Sam was Sam had written a, a, one of the design docs, um, design proposals, not design doc to be fair. And we've been evolving the conversation since then. So I wanted to kind of take that same thing, but invert it a little bit to try to address some of the more recent conversations. Um, I've also noticed that we don't seem to be sticking very well with the Google Doc stuff. So I did copy it uh, into here. And this is the PR that's uh, um, mentioned um, in the notes. What is it? Add signature verification lookup. So uh, the, the overview is basically, you know, we're trying to find a set of signatures and the verification objects that could go with it. Um, so we're just kind of outlining that. Uh, for the, I kind of did identify some of the goals and non-goals um, and a workflow, uh, which comes from scenario six in the uh, signature requirements or the scenarios under the requirements repo. And basically one of them, and this is something we were discussing early on, is the artifact in its digest shall not change as the result of something being pushed. This is one of the things that I know we debate a little bit, but I think the conversations we've been having around um, the registry operators that have been seeing this in AWS and Azure and in other places as well, is we see that customers actually follow and deploy based on a digest directly in some cases. We'd actually like them to be doing for what we call a unique tag, but because unique tags are not a physically enforced thing as a spec, 
you, like tag locking is a number of a feature a number of the registries support, but it's not really in the uh, spec that some customers get nervous and actually want to deploy by digest. Others as the developers are putting in their deployment artifacts in their kube deploy files or compose files, whatever the helm charts is a referencing referencing a specific image and tag. They could also reference a digest. The point is, is that as the developer puts that in early on, some of the proposals we were thinking about is we would update the index and then that digest and our tag would change. And that would mean the deploy YAML would have to uh, change as well. So this goes with the assumption that you cannot change uh, that as part of breaking the developer's workflow. Um, a collection of, verific object, ver collection of verification objects may also be associated with a single artifact. So I could have multiple signatures uh, on an image. I could have a tough verification graph, whatever we want to we'll call that metadata, tough metadata. That's what the term you guys, you guys have been using. That can also be associated with that. Uh, and then we wanted to be able to leverage the garbage collection because if you think of the things that we can change easily on registries and things that we can't, um, the garbage collection is one of the biggest monsters that we all implement because just because you can uh, automate things, customers do, and we wind up with massive amounts of uh, content in registries. Um, and then the shared layered stuff, we invest a lot to make sure that we can clean these things up and reduce the size over time. Uh, also minimize the requirements to change the persistent object stores because that's another thing each of us implement on our unique inf infrastructure. You know, AWS has their storage, we have ours, Google, so on and so forth, on-prem. Uh, so that's another expensive part of the stack that we would have to uh, change. Uh, some non-goals just to put things out there is, you know, work within the existing OCI distribution spec API. Not that we're breaking it, but the idea is that we would add uh, an API is possible. Like the, I don't think adding an API is relatively cheap. It's the garbage collection and storage that become expensive. So that's all this is outlining. Uh, uh, I it, mean, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, adding APIs is expensive in, in, some, in some sense and it does depend on um, people's data models and things, how easy it is. Because this is quite, uh, I mean, this is a, this is not a trivial API change. I, so well, I think we'll get we to should... what the API is, but my point was is that uh, just the concept of adding an API to go find something, implementing the API might be expensive depending on what the API is, but if we just said uh, a, a plus one of an API on something to the distribution spec to find these things, because in this case what I'm suggesting is uh, you look up uh, things that reference an index. And we'll see that in a second. And, and you, you could argue the point. I, and it, and it's yeah, fine. I mean, yeah, I think we just, we need to, we need to have some discussion with implementers about how difficult they think this would be. Fair. Um, and then compatibility with Notary V1, we've said all along that uh, V2 is not uh, a compatibility uh, bar. Uh, we want to leverage the the work, the thoughts, the efforts, but it's not uh, that anybody, that, that the, the few people that have implemented Notary V1 in registries, to be fair, not Notary altogether, but Notary V1 in registries, Docker Content Trust, it's not expected that that work would, you know, be just transparently moved forward. So then the, the workflow, like I said, we, is from the scenario six, is a dev team builds a container image. Um, I've just put a tag on there for reference. Uh, they sign that image, and, which is the verification uh, thing. Uh, the, some artifact scanning solution comes by and says, hey, I've looked at it today. And as of today, you know, here's what I assess as the vulnerabilities. And it could push that assessment to that same tag. Again, it's referencing the same tag, but we'll see in a second the tag and the digest for that actually don't change. It's another reference to it. Uh, the test environment goes through. The test environment says, yep, I've, uh, the image was built securely. That's great. It was scanned securely. That's great. But it actually does work in this environment. Uh, so I will stick another verification object on it and says, this thing is now good to be deployed. Uh, or actually, I guess this is a unit test. I think I did a second one here, which might be overkill. Um, let me remember, it's been a couple of weeks. Yeah, so basically in the staging environment, that's right. The staging environment is now verifying that the right signatures are on this thing before going to production. So uh, I 
another verification object is pushed to it. Now, as the thing moves into production, the production environment will only deploy things that have the right signatures on it is the uh, design here. So it has to have the build. Now, I didn't get into the detail here. It could also have the Ubuntu signature. It might, must be signed by Ubuntu as well. Um, but I was more focused on the, uh, the company's specific uh, signatures because they could say that that signature itself says they will only sign things that come from vendors that they approve. Uh, but those are additive. There's nothing exclusive of it. The whole idea is you have multiple verification objects on it. Now, I'll ask for a bit of patience here for one. We can talk about this, but because uh, this is the part. There's, this is the one that discusses what I kind of referred to as the downward reference. We, as, uh, we tend to dig in quickly. I was, and I'm debating whether I should even include this because we start evaluating this. What I was trying to do is provide this section as staging to why I was doing the reverse lookup uh, model. So um, before I do that, any questions on the workflow or the goals and non-goals? Just a point of pause. Um, I would like to support for the requirement that adding signatures should not require changing references to images. As for the sorry, specific but, implementation or how that in, uh, integrates with stuff that's to be resolved, but it's good to have the requirement recorded. I'm sorry, I missed part of that. Uh, as for the specific implementation or how this would integrate with stuff that's to be decided, but it's, it's good to have the requirement recorded, I think. Okay, so uh, good to have a requirement to integrate. I have added that to the PR review, by the way, anyway, so you have a written record. Okay. Anybody else? I think um, I, I don't want to derail, so I'll, I'll just kind of say this like quickly, but I think also um, you should list under non-goals um, something about like protection from attack if the registry is compromised. Because, um, you know, and you can be more specific about it and say that you know, an attacker will be able to freely replay things or move tags or do other stuff like this in the design. But um, there's a big kind of, I, I think someone reading this might get the impression that they're, that they're getting certain security properties out, especially if you're doing things like if you're transporting tough metadata, the expectation is sort of, well, hey, if I'm using tough, then tough is built for compromise resilience of my infrastructure. Therefore, I, I bet I'm getting compromise resilience of my infrastructure. Okay, I mean, it's, that's a good one. Like, uh, I hadn't explicitly thought about excluding that. This was more of a base um, that we could add. And that's a good conversation for us to have, either if we have time today or in the uh, agenda item for next week. Yeah, the, 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 there are, it, yeah, if there, if there are security compromises for not including signatures in the content, which then, you know, then I think that's, um, you know, a significant issue. I mean, it's, it's, it's clear that, um, signatures via pointers versus signature by content are not equivalent in security sense. Fair. So I think I understand what you're saying. So let's get down to the some of the scheme on it that might help uh, on some of this because I don't know if it solves it or doesn't honestly. Well, no, I, I mean, it, 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 it can't, it, if, if the content does not it refer to this, you know, it does not include the content of the signature, then I wouldn't know. Oh, well, no, 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 no. Uh, so let me, um, let me jump ahead. Cause it, uh, unless it, you've read it, I don't think you've had a chance to read through this. Have you, Justin? Sorry, Cormac. 
can I reference the person by first name? If yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, on then. go on. <laughs> it, it's like using you, it, as long as the context is clear, it's fine <laughs> to say it. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me, uh, let me go forward because I, I definitely want to give time for a debate, but I wanted to at least get some of the context out. So uh, in the, in what I refer to is the downward reference and is that you push a thing and like a manifestor index. So in this case, it is an index. And I just showed the multi-platform parts of it as well. Um, and there's actually two of them, right? There's one that's AMD64, one PPC. So just the copy paste thing. Um, and then the map, then this thing is pointing to a manifest and the manifest is what points to the layers, right? This is the standard OCI index and manifest model. So this is kind of a, a downward reference, right? An index references a manifest. Both of them can have signature content, by the way, uh, but there's this downward reference. That's the way we think about with registries. Um, so we've been largely focusing on this downward reference that I can push a new index and, you know, that could have my new signatures. The problem is, is if you reference this index, the index, uh, even if the tag doesn't change, the digest changes. So that's been the concern that is, even though I don't believe in doing digest-based deployments as an opinion, um, that, that's the point. It's an opinion and some people do and we need to be able to support that. Um, so based on Sam's example, uh, you would pull it as you know this uh, web A2B2 A uh, and you would have, you know, this manifest. Um, and then you can add a signature with into an index. And this is the, the point here is that the index, of course, has changed from what it was originally or changing from a manifest to an index, you know, depending on when the signature was sent. It certainly doesn't solve, even if you do, did the initial push, if I wanted to add an additional signature for my dev staging test environment uh, scenarios, there's no way to do that without <clears throat> these changing in the quote downward reference. So the reverse lookup model, um, and I, we can talk about if that's the right name or whatever, but the concept is a what if. So um, here's the original thing that's pushed uh, in, it's an OCI manifest, it's web A2B2 and the digest is whatever, um, or not whatever, but it's a specific digest is the point. Um, and then I can push additional signatures and verification objects. So I could say this thing is signed by test.consoso.com and this thing has a digest and um, I could, uh, oh, I can sign another one that, oh, see, scan.contoso.com. I forgot what I had here myself. So I've got two signatures that are verification objects that were pushed later that um, can reference this. And that could further be, I'm gonna skip ahead just for a moment and I'll come back is the thing that it references could also store additional information such as SBOM or tough metadata, as well as scan results as well. Uh, it's not just the scan, but some scan results. So you can see that there's this model here. So this is the part that I just wanted to get through and then obviously uh, open for discussion. So in this case, what we're doing is the index is versioned to include the config object, the same thing we've got on manifest. So now I can see an OCI index is of type CNCF notary or whatever we decide to call it. Um, we add an API that lets us find uh, index uh, objects, artifacts that match this type associated with this. So this object didn't change because it didn't reference this, but this does reference um, this one, all of them. So now what happens is uh, the, the manifest is the same as above. Nothing's changed here, standard manifest. It's an image config and it's got layers. The staging verification object. Now this is an index, <clears throat> excuse me, with a new config object. This is the stuff we've been uh, at, talking about. We haven't committed to this yet. Uh, but the media type of that is now a CNCF notary uh, verification object. So this is how this index is known to be of its type. And it directly references this image. So it's this got pushed referencing this. Uh, sorry, am I going too fast for a screen refresh? I forget I'm not presenting directly, but I have the this internet in the middle. A couple of people across some ponds over there. Um, it's actually working quite well. Okay. Surprisingly. <laughs> 
<laughs> like there's no trust. It's like surprisingly. It is. Huh. Um, so basically that's, that's kind of the main thing. I have a detail that again, might be too much detail and it, and it, it might distract from it, that the idea is that the actual signature could be put in the config object. So let's just scan, skip that for now. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to derail too much. Um, but then so what's, again, what's to stop the signature being garbage collected because it's not got a tag pointing at it. Ah, okay. So that's been, an, I, I saw some people talking about that. Um, and I've been meaning to talk more to Joey and um, uh, Sam and others. And uh, I'm not sure how Docker Hub handles it as well. What we've seen is customers actually, because they reference by digest, don't want things art automatically garbage collected if there's no tag. In ACR, we support both. You can do, in fact, you can do automatic garbage collection if the tag has been deleted. But we actually have a, a delineation that uh, we won't, if you choose, we don't delete anything by default, obviously. A customer can choose whether they want to uh, delete digests that have no tag references or they save them because they're not actually deploying by tags. So the garbage collection, the way we've always thought about garbage collection as the core, that is not really a questionable thing, is if I have two images that reference the same base layers, that we don't delete the base layers until all manifests are deleted. We don't, the, the connection between a tag and a digest is not assumed uh, to automatically be garbage collected. Well, okay, because Docker, Hub, Docker, Hub, Docker Hub is moving to the model where if it's not tagged, it's GC'd. So I can certainly understand that for something like Hub, um, but that's not something our customers would accept in private registries because they do deployments on digests only because uh, they feel that's the only secure way to do it. Now, if we're successful, and maybe if we were able to get tag locking as a spec conform thing that customers would accept it as a standard, then maybe we could get them to agree to unique tagging uh, as a model. But uh, even though I would like to get there, I, we can't, we couldn't do that today on ACR and, and, and keep our customers happy. And this part is not an inherent unavoidable part of the way it is uh, of the design. Correct. If we are talking about a registry that can do reverse lookups that already requires the registry to have an index, to have a new lookup API. So we could also add a new upload API that makes the association explicit. This is a signature for an image with that digest. And that also automatically allows the registry to model the dependencies for garbage collection purposes directly. And it would not have to well, mm, index and uh, it would not have to specifically recognize every specialized config types to say, oh, this is a signature, so I need to mark a reverse dependency. But then that that's a well, because then uh, that's a really weird model because I mean the nice thing about it, apart from that, is it's just um you know, effectively you could point at the um the signature object if you wanted, but you don't have to in this model. You've got a choice that you can point at either thing because you can retrieve the signature. Uh, that, well, anyway, and it's, but it's just a normal object. Having a list of types of object that are not garbage collected normally because they are often pointed to in the other direction is really weird kind of config. Like how would you- Well, it's definitely how, new. Like the reverse how, would you add, definitely... how would you add the set of types for which they don't get garbage collected? That's, that seems yeah, and it has so I'm curious what you're saying about garbage. I'm sorry, man. Signature type that is not recognized by the registry. The registry is just going to accept it as a valid OCI index, but it not, it's not going to tell you, by the way, I'm going to garbage collect this and your signature will disappear. Justin, is your concern that you can push these CNCF notary objects? I'll just call them for simplicity because that's what the red text says. Um, they're without a tag and it would automatically get garbage collected in Docker Hub? Yeah. Okay. So there's two parts. One, there's nothing that says you couldn't push it with a tag as well. Yeah, no, completely. You could push things with a tag. Um, 
in this case, I just don't say think it's useful because there really isn't the tag isn't anything useful on it. You could say, like, obviously there is some API changes here, and I appreciate that you guys are going to a, <clears throat> a tag, a, a, what we call orphaned, uh, what do we call them, orphaned images or something? I forget. If it's not tagged, we we call them orphans, and I'm not sure if that's should be not called them because orphans aren't bad. Uh, anyway, uh, the uh, I've been recently watching the Orphan Black se series, which has got my head all twisted. Um, too much detail. So the, the what you could do is in this API, you could say that these things that don't have tags that have digests, if they reference this, you know, something with a tag that's still valid, that you don't garbage collect them. So you could, I mean, obviously there is work to do in a registry to support this uh, uh, concept. So it would be an additive thing that you would have to put in your exclusion is don't delete orphaned uh, artifacts without that don't have tags um, if they are referencing something that is uh, valid. So it, it does fit into the garbage collection model, but it is a change, especially if you guys are just starting to do, go down that path. Um, i trying to think if there's something else in here. What was in the pros and cons section? Yeah, oh, I was, yeah. Um, so in the pros and cons, so basically multiple signatures can be added. So that was, you know, one of the things there, where there's no uh, content change to the thing you originally pushed. So all your deployment artifacts, you know, your compose files, your Helm charts, your, you know, kube deploys, they cha don't change whatsoever. It doesn't matter whether you reference them by tag or digest, they stay perfectly the same. In fact, the scanners that are trying to do index information on it will also you know, be able to, to, to cache that information. Um, so that's the, the point there. The con is it is a new API, which we said wasn't really a con, but it is, you know, I still wanted to call it out. Um, the reverse lookup does, oh, I actually did reference it. It does have an impact on garbage collection because there is some new logic that does have to get added to it. Uh, we do tend to traverse down that in this case, there is an awareness that has to be done uh, of all the things that are, you know, linked after the fact. Um, you know, like, this is actually going into a, what I think you were calling out, Justin, Cormac. Um, yeah, I, I, there's this really weird inconsistency between what you're, you're saying that people want to refer to something by hash because they don't trust it might change and yet they um, effectively are also saying that they do want some things about it to change like these signatures but not other things about it and so there's a weird characterization of what things about it exactly which is they want to change or not change and is this behavior actually is this kind of requirement actually reasonable? So what they're saying okay, is they don't want the thing they're actually deploying to change. They want to know that the image that's going to run. Does, but, you know, do they oh, want the, you know, Sorry. what else about it? Are they okay with, are they okay if the S bomb changes? Are they okay if like, like there's a lot of things that we might end up pointing like this if we go through this model and I'm, I'm not 100% sure that actually everyone will be happy with all of these things changing. What if like um, a signature was removed um, and so it was no longer signed by, my, by the author because the author had invalidated the signature, say, by deleting it because the, the key had been compromised or something, say. Um, like, would that still be okay if the signature has been removed for it to still be... Un, an unchanged object that it looks still kind of looks okay. I mean, I mean, I think there's there's just a bunch of questions that immediately come to mind about what what changes are okay and what are not, and and by making this decision, you're you're effectively making a decision about that for people about content. Whereas previously, the definition of content hash was everything about the thing, and obviously, no, nothing can change. Um, no, it's fair. Let's tag, talk everything can change. And like the, 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 we're kind of asking for an intermediate stage. And I think it, it requires some thoughts about whether that's, it can be 
concrete, how, you know, is there a good definition of that all users can understand about something in between those two things? No, it's fair. And let's uh, tease those apart because there's a couple of them that um, I could think of three parts of it. So one, the thing there that they like about the digest or an immutable tag, either one, is the actual content they're going to deploy is locked. It will not change, right? We're not adding new content to the Docker image. We're not adding, um, or we're just not changing anything about the layers or the image itself. Everything about that is sealed. What they're getting is additional metadata, and I'm air quoting because metadata is a loaded term. Uh, they get additional information about that image that is added after. So that's the, it, it didn't change its additive is the, the thing that ties the two together because I can get these new signatures. Um, so I think that part still meets what the requirements of the people that want either digest deployment or an immutable tag uh, deployment. The interesting one that you're mentioning around the delete is one, so if there was a verification object that was there, then somehow it gets deleted. Um, is that, you know, what do you deal with that? And that's kind of what I just think about is the registry security models is that we support, you know, just because you can push doesn't mean you can delete um, is something that the private registries tend to support. Yeah, but that's where, as Justin Capwell has pointed out, Actually, I don't have to disambiguate Justin, don't I? Um, <laughs> um, Justin pointed out that that is something that the tough security model is protecting you against and therefore is considered security relevant. So well, <laughs> it's yeah. interesting to think, sorry, somebody else? Uh, yeah, the idea that the, the images identified by the Marrakesh Digest is a complete unit and it either nothing changes about it if the digest doesn't change. Uh, it's good to have that property, but we are, anytime we go outside of the realm of one image, we are losing that anyway. Uh, like if you have a Kubernetes deployment for that image and you change the security configuration uh, of, of the pod definition or you change the volume bounds, you can break a fully tested image with uh, exactly the same manifest digest uh, the same way. There is always some higher level metadata that changes the behavior of the image and keeping the manifest digest exactly the same can't help you with that. So in that sense, I don't think this would be introducing anything new. And if we are in the model of, of a signature as an approval or something that can be added or removed, then that's necessarily a metadata that is pointed at, a digest, at, at an image digest, but conceptually should not be part of it. I agree that it's uncomfortable and conceptually messy, but I don't think we can just avoid it or, or pretend that it, it, it never happens. So one of the things, you mentioned something interesting, Justin, that, that the tough metadata, you know, um, tracks that things got you know deleted or not or what the original state was so the thing that i was trying to get is a minimum viable product you know mvp i don't know if that's a term we use anymore but anyway the you know the minimum base to build upon is that if we can just get things that are signed that and including additive collections that one of the additive collections could be the tough metadata so if you ask for something you can get the tough metadata for that thing. Um, and whether this, that, and there's nothing that says that this tough metadata couldn't reference this directly. That, well, I guess it depends on the, the, for tough metadata to reference another thing, it has to be an index. So maybe tough winds up being an index but, instead of a manifest. I mean, t the tough data will need to be pointed out by the tag effectively, because that's, that is, you have to be able to discover it. Well, I mean, technically it will. That's kind um, of the thing here is you can yeah. discover it. Because as long but as yeah. the tough object references this, I can add tough metadata and not change the digest of the thing that was originally pushed. Well, for tough, you need separate storage APIs for the root keys and timestamp keys and, and so on. So, yeah, well, those can just be well-known tags. That's not so much of an issue. Um, 
Yeah, but it's, it's not going to be associated with a single image like this anyway. I think Tuff can deliver the lookup by digest just by looking up the digest in the in the Tuff sign metadata. So it's not inconsistent, but it doesn't require this mechanism in particular. I've I've got a drop, but let, um, I need to think about this a bit more. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I forgot that we were yeah. back. Well, I didn't yeah. we were half an hour. I didn't realize we went that fast. So um, that's what Slack's for. Uh, yeah, that's some notes. Uh, there is some notes in the Google Doc originally that uh, Joey hasn't had a chance to copy over yet, but um, let me know and we'll pick up next week. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Miloslav. How do you get out of that picture?